with all my mind and my will and my feelings. Because we like God so much. I like God so much. I like the food He created. I like the joy He gave us. I like the peace He gave us. I like the ministry He gave us. I like to see your faces, your smile. I thank God for all this. And so I have good feelings toward God. I know God is good. So I like God. When I pray to God, I can pray, Oh Jesus, I like you. Oh, I like you. I love you. <laughs> Can you like God? Yes. You need to, we need to learn to do that. And then worship with the whole spirit. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. With the whole spirit. And then your spirit will be free. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> and then joy will flow out naturally. Joy will flow out naturally. When I laugh, it's not me laughing, it's the Holy Spirit inside me. When I think of God, the joy just flow out. So I hope you learn to thank God for these five areas, and also learn to this prayer of grace, prayer of worship, and interactive prayer. Let me test you a little bit. And you tell me what kind of prayer it is, okay? God, I love you. What is that? What kind of prayer is this? God, I love you. What is it? Worship. worship, right? Very good. Okay. God is loving me now. What is that? Pray of grace. Okay. Whenever I pray, God is listening to me. Interactive prayer. Very good. You learned it very fast. So I hope you remember to use it. And also learn to really agree that God is the best. With the whole mind, God is the best. So I want to dedicate my whole life to God. And I want to pray for Nigeria because I've heard from some people, some people use witchcraft in the ministry. I don't know if you've heard people like that. And they think they can get some money or more people when they use witchcraft. But do they get God to like them? Does God like them? No. God doesn't like them. Then they lose everything. Even if they have a big church, does it mean anything? No. No. So don't ever use witchcraft or any dishonest way. Now some people use dishonest way. Now when I come to different countries, I bring money for the ministry, for the conference. Of course I tell the people also you should contribute to that too. But I tell the people, very, it's very important that you use the money only for the conference. Don't keep the money for yourself. Because you keep your money for yourself or keep any money from the church without the permission of the church. You're tearing down your ministry. We are all built on the foundation of Jesus. But if we build on the foundation at the same time we have dishonesty, we are cheating, we are tearing down the ministry, and we are also tearing down spiritual life, and some people can lose salvation because of that. So please, don't ever don't ever commit any sin and think that God doesn't see you. Because God sees you and God will chase after us. So we want to respect God and honor God. With all our mind, I want to follow God. And all our will. And all our feelings. And all our spirit. Now I'm going to say briefly about the law. Just now I talk about the grace. The balance of grace and law. Now you can see that I'm very relaxed in the Lord. I enjoy the Lord. I love the Lord I, and I know that God loves me. Now many people, they think that when we have the love of God, then I can sin. I can do anything I want. But let me tell you, the Bible has warned us that sins are very, very destructive. So we have a balance of the grace of God and the law of God. In Galatians chapter 8 verse chapter 6 verse 8 Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction So when we sow to the flesh we'll reap destruction When we follow anger now Many Christians when they go home they are angry with the wife or husband or the children 
this few days we'll talk about how to handle anger. But when we have anger, we can solve destruction because it will ruin the relationship with people. We will hurt the relationship with people. It will hurt our ministry. So we, we have any sin, we know that it's very destructive. And also John 5.14. John 5.14, John, Jesus said to the man who has, who has been healed of 38 years of sickness. And Jesus said, sin no more, lest the worst thing will happen to you. So we know that sins will bring destruction. Now how does it bring destruction? First, if we sin, God doesn't like us. Even if we ask God to forgive us. Now let me distinguish two terms. God's love and God's pleasure. God loves everyone. God loves all of us. But God is pleased with David. The Bible says, right? God has found a person he's pleased with. That is David. Because he has obeyed him. Now even though David has sinned, seriously. But he truly, truly repents. So, God is seeking people who really honor him and love him and obey him and serve him sincerely. These people, God is pleased with. The Bible distinguishes loving people and being pleased with some people. So, for those people who sin secretly, who think that God doesn't see them, their sins, God is not happy at all. Even though God loves them, God wants to bring them back. But there are many Christians in the church that are very weak. That their life is just following the world and God is not pleased with them. So we remember, when we know God loves us, at the same time we know that God is pleased with those who trust in Him and love Him and obey Him. And it's not hard to please Him. Now, right down here, why is it not hard to please Him? Because whenever we repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. Whenever we truly repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. And whenever we come to Him, we draw close to Him, God will draw close to us. And then whenever we love Him, God has prepared for us what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and a human heart have not thought of. That God will prepare for you great things when you love Him. And then when we give a cup of cold water, He will remember and He will reward. So is it easy to please God? It is. But when we sin, we sincerely ask God to forgive us. And then God will really forgive us. Sincerely means, I really want to say no to the sins. I really want to turn away from the sins. I really don't want anything to ruin my life. I don't want anything to ruin the plan of God in my life. Now when you teach young people who are not married, there are many young people that say, oh, I want to find a good spouse. I want to chase after the good looking girl. I want to chase after the rich guy. I see if I can find someone. Really, really good. Let me tell you, that's not how it works in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, God has planned for you already. My first wife passed away in 2008. At that time, I thought I would just stay single and go to the mission field. But God has planned for me a second wife, whom I did not chase after and she did not chase after me. And I found that she's the best wife for me. Amen. She has so much wisdom, so much love, so much care. She has given me wisdom in many teachings. She has helped me in many ways. God will prepare for each person the best for them. So we need to teach the people, don't chase after girls or guys. You just follow God and love God and obey God and don't use your secret ways. And also don't use lust. Many Christian guys, they always think of, I want to chase after this girl and have sex with the girl. In that way, it will ruin God's plan for his life. It will ruin God's plan for his life. And then, for us, it's for, important for us to, to remind ourselves and to remind other people. If anyone has an affair outside of our marriage, we're going to ruin our life, our ministry, our future. I've seen that happen to some pastors. They have ruined their life. It's very hard to pick up again. So today, when I talk about the balance of grace and the law of God, it's that we live in the love of God, we relax in the love of God, we enjoy the love of God. 
Every time we pray, we can think of enjoying God. Hallelujah! God is blessing me. Hallelujah! Ha, 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 ha. God is blessing me. Think of enjoying God, then you can pray for a long time. Just relax and enjoy God. And then at the same time, I want to make the best use of my life. If I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things will be added to me. Now, what does it mean to seek His kingdom? You can write this down. Two meanings. One, I want more people to enter the kingdom of grace, more people to be saved. So I want to save more people. I want to bring more people to Jesus. Second, wherever God is the king, there is his kingdom. That means I submit to him totally. He's my king in my heart. He's my king in my home. He's my king in my ministry, in my church, in my, my every walk of life. God is the king in everything. Then I'm seeking his kingdom. Let him be the king everywhere. If we seek God to be the king everywhere and want to bring people to the kingdom of God, God will, will honor that and God will bless your whole life. You see your life blossom and you see revival come to Nigeria and you see your church grow and revived and new light come into your life because God can do great things. Can you believe that? Yes. God has a wonderful plan. God has a wonderful plan in our lives. So I hope that we are motivated by the love of God, the grace of God, and not by guilt and not by pressure. And then we are motivated to follow God, not with pressure. When I serve God, I don't have pressure. I serve God with joy and peace and motivation. I don't feel tired when I serve God. I want to teach more. I want to train people more. I want to help people more. So I hope today we see the balance. And I tell you honestly, I have listened to many messages, many sermons, and I found that, that this is found in the Bible, right? That we are motivated by the love of God. It's the love of God. You, you read Romans 8, you can see the, talk about the love of God. You can see also in Ephesians, to see how high and how deep and how wide is the love of God in Jesus Christ. So, the Bible tells us it was motivated by the love of God, not by the law. But yet, we obey the law of God. We obey every teaching in the Bible. That way, we are following God with our whole life. And we are not following guilt. We are not pressured by guilt. Okay, now before we finish, I want to ask if you have any questions about this. Maybe some of you, because this is a training. And I would like you to write down to my teaching this morning about the balance of the grace and the law of God. So if you don't understand, you ask me now. So tomorrow you hand in a paper and tell me what you have learned today about the balance of the grace and the law of God. This is the foundation of my teaching. Very important. It's also the foundation of the Bible. And I want to say I have listened to many sermons. I found that most sermons are biased toward the law. It's always the law. You didn't do it, you have to repent and do it and obey. Now it's true, but there's not much grace and not much love, not much motivation for love. And people think if they talk about love too much, then people will be lazy. You've heard me talk about the love of God. At the same time, I talk about how serious it is to sin. And, and then people will have motivation not to sin. So we don't have to rebuild people all the time. We need to rebuild when they really don't repent. But most of the time we encourage them. And let them know how wonderful God is. And how wonderful it is to serve God. Anyone want to ask questions, you can ask now. Or in the break time you can ask me. Yes sir. And please speak loudly. Yes, the Lord. So I want to ask a question on the difference between the law of Moses and the law of Christ. Okay. Now in the Old Testament there were the law of the moral law and uh, uh, the ritual and uh, what do you call it? the word I, liturgical and ritual laws. For instance 
offering of the sacrifice. We don't do it today. We don't offer the animals. And we're not bound by the Sabbath day or the festivals in the Old Testament. Now in Galatians and in Colossians, it says very clearly, in Galatians it says very clearly that Paul said, because you always pay attention to the festivals and the days, I worry for you. So the Bible says very clearly that we are not bound by these ritual laws in the Old Testament. But the moral law is the same. But we have a higher standard. Uh, Jesus said that it's not just the outside, but in the inside. But even in Old Testament too, they should obey from the inside. So we follow the moral law, but the liturgical law, we don't have to offer animal, right? When we sin. Because Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. Okay? Any other questions? Yes? Thank you for the wonderful teaching. Thank you. I picked about three questions to ask. Go, go, go. Uh, number one is, you said when you visited South Africa, say again, when you visited South Africa, that uh, before then somebody had a, a dream of you, right? who never saw you before. <laughs> Yeah. The person never saw you before. Right. I put that video on line two. You look for South Africa Pastor Yip. You can see that video of that woman who testified to that. Okay. It has been a, a burden in my heart for a few days now. Because I remember some occasion somebody would say, I saw you talking of myself okay. in a place I never went to. Okay. How I was guiding him not to speak when he was driving. Right. I discourage him. So don't take, don't take it to me so because I am one person, I can't be two. Then another one said he was sick, she was sick. And I came there and sat by the side and prayed and described the dress I was wearing. I didn't go there. And the person became well. Then I told the person, no, don't have that. It's not me. Now why it was important to me because I went somewhere, a minister of God as well. Each testimony that come up will say, I saw you talk to me in a different place from where he was. I don't know if I'm to condemn that because I discouraged anybody that had that okay. about me. That's my first question. Do okay. I come with the second? Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, the second is you talk about interact, interactive prayer. Okay. Um, when you talk of interactive prayer, I pray, I saw it interaction. You talk to me, I talk to you. That's interaction. I saw it as when I talk to God, I listen to God. Just like in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. So we know not how we ought to pray. The Spirit make it intercession. So in that, that's the time I want to pray. I will talk with the Spirit and keep calm. And He will speak to me. I call that interactive prayer. Okay. How wrong or how right am I? Okay. Yours is also interactive prayer. Uh, that God respond to us, the move of the Holy Spirit. But also, what I talk about the interactive is, I believe from the Bible that the Bible says that God will listen to my prayer. God will come to bless me. God is happy with what I do. It's, so it's based on the scripture, that I believe in the promises in the Bible. So I believe that God is reacting, responding to my prayer. So that's what my mean. But what you mean is also correct. It's okay, you know, these are terms, you know, human terms, it doesn't matter, okay? And about the first experience you have, let me tell you, if you have watched Sid Roth on It's Supernatural on YouTube, you can see a number of people have experience like that. Now, that's something you can try to find out if that's true, that God can use you in a way far away from here. It, you can find out if that's true. If that's true, you thank God for that. So I don't think you need to forbid that, but you can ask the person, are you sure, can you describe it? And you can watch on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, the, it's supernatural. It, it's short for, it is supernatural. And the person responsible are uh, leading is Sid Roth. And there are stories like that. <laughs> Thank you, God bless you. Okay, Any, anyone? Somebody, yes? Somebody want to add, add something to that question. Somebody yes. want to add something. Okay, someone want to add. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for the
Thank you so much for the teaching. God bless you so much. And uh, yes, it has been happening. Like somebody can tell you, maybe your member or whatsoever uh, can tell you. Nothing. Okay. Can tell you that I saw you in a dream. I was lion was pursuing me, and robbers were about to kill me. But I saw you. You manifested and prayed. Yes, that is what is called theophany in theology. God taking form of an angel, or even a person you believe in, a man of God. God can take that for If God comes in his fullness, you might not recognize, or you may be too afraid. He can use a man of God you believe in and appear and deliver you. It is not that man of God that did it. It has happened several other people. So, man of God, thank you for delivering me. As I was sleeping, you know, I don't know about you. It is God that did it. So, it has been happening. Don't condemn it. God is manifesting in different forms. Yeah. Okay, there's a question there. If you bring the mic. Because this is learning, study, so we need to think and respond. Hallelujah. My name is Emmanuel. I want to know, talk about the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. Yeah. I want to know, can God love me more than my brother? What do I need? What do I need? Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to know if God can. If God can love, let me use for instance. If God can love me more than two, what do I say? Because I know if I'm, if I'm mistaken, I'm actually corrected. I know that the best gift Jesus, God gave to us is Jesus. That's the best gift. Yes. So I don't know if, if God has the other gift. But I mean, God loving you or loving me more than you. And I know that he did. Uh, let me say, God's love is the same for everyone. It's the same for everyone. But God's pleasing with people are different. God is pleased with people who love him more. Okay, the love is the same. Is that, is that okay. God's love is the same for everyone. Because God cannot, cannot love differently. He can only love totally. Okay, any question? Yes, I want to ask someone this Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has a standard for everybody. He doesn't love anybody differently. But you, you can open a relationship with God, whereby you relate to God, because God loves relationship. When God created the first man and woman in the Garden of Eden, God demonstrated relationship as what he wants for the people he created in his own image and likeness. Even today, if you establish a special relationship with God, it will make it seem as though you, the love he has for you is different from the one he has for another person. Otherwise, God has the same love for everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a comment. That's a comment. This person I love, and this person I hate. You know what I'm people? I love their God more than this. So, love love is somehow. They can love you more than you. And the reason for coming in one night is looking for a divine purpose. I think from the whole scripture, the Bible says, For God so loved the world. And today we can see God loves the Middle East, uh, the Islamic people. And uh, God loves them. And God appears to them. Uh, so, in the light of that, I will see that. God hates Esau, not meaning he hates him, but in a sense that in the plan of God, God has a plan to use Jacob. Yeah. That has a special yes. plan in the yes. life of Jacob. Yes. And if Esau really follow God, he can also follow that plan also. Mm. That is, as, to me, is as far as the plan of God in their lives. If Esau wants to follow God, he can be blessed by God also. If God doesn't withhold his blessings from Esau. So I, uh, it's a difficult verse yes. from that. Yes. But then, from the verse that, you know, for God so loved the world, and also in um, first, uh, first John chapter 2, it says that the, um, Jesus has died for all, not just for some, for all. So, so we know that he has died for all people.
So he loves all people. And nowadays we see Jesus has appeared to many, many people of different religions when they seek God. They, they saw uh, Jesus in a vision. Okay? Any more question? Now, I want to say this. In these few days, we have all very important teachings. This is a foundation. It's very important. And it can change our life. But it takes time to change our life. We can start by praying and say, God is loving me. Thank you, Lord. You are loving me right now. And I, when I pray to you, you are happy with me. So we can start with that and make it a habit. And I hope you can teach this in your church. So it's very important for you to teach this in the church. Now, because the network is not very good, actually it should be on Facebook. You can look for Facebook Pastor Yip, Y-I-P, right? Name is spelled Y-I-P. It's just Pastor Yip, no Timothy there. Uh, but because of the network, it's not very good. Uh, but then, if you wait for a few weeks, you can see on YouTube. And then you look for Ni Nigeria, Pastor Yip. And then you can see the videos. And then you can re you know, review the material again. And then so you can to learn it deeply. And also you can introduce to other people. Now at this point, I want to pray with each one of us right now. Let us stand up together and come to God and believe that God is loving us right now. God is loving us right now. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Over here. 
Let's put our hands for the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. 